It was 1997. Biggie dropped Hypnotize before he passed away. Men in Black came out. Princess Diana was assassinated. And I wasn't even born yet. But Shawn Michaels was definitely born. But not born again. Shawn Michaels at this time was in his prime douchebag phase. He was dropping titles, popping pills, pissing everyone off, playing politics backstage, making Vader cry, and even getting beat up by Marines at a bar. But somehow, some way, that crackhead was still a top 3 wrestler in the world when he wasn't faking injuries. In the fall of 97, after hitting The Undertaker with a chair at SummerSlam, Shawn found himself in a feud with the dead man. He would always survive, and even when thrown in the first ever Hell in a Cell match and Taker absolutely destroyed him, Shawn Michaels somehow survived. Whether it was a hell in a cell, casket match, it didn't matter. But the feud wasn't just in the ring, it was backstage as well when the cameras were off. While Shawn Michaels was on his full crackhead mode, Undertaker wasn't having it. If Shawn back then was on fire, I probably wouldn't have pissed on him to put him out. Taker wasn't a fan of Shawn's ways. In 1998, it was the final straw. Shawn was about to leave the company for a bit. He had a serious back injury and he needed time off, but it was WrestleMania 14. The main event was Austin and Sean, and Sean had to lose the belt and put Austin over. But Sean still tried politicking a win backstage. He tried convincing everyone that he should win the match until Taker pulled up to him and told him he better lose or else while taping his fist. Sean did the match and he lost cleanly and it was his last match for 4 years. After classics inside the ring and beef outside the ring, the Taker and HBK saga was over. Fast forward to 2007, it was the Royal Rumble, and the final two men in the ring were Shawn and Taker. In the ring together for the first time since 1998, Shawn Michaels had retired and came back, he had found God, Undertaker became a satanic cult leader, then a biker, then a Texas Ranger, but here they were in the ring together for the first time in 9 years. For 10 minutes at the end of the Rumble, they put on a classic match out of nowhere, but this time, Taker got the W. And at the end of the match, both men were there and you could see there was mutual respect between them. This wasn't 97 anymore, they had a few tag matches in the upcoming months, but once WrestleMania 23 was over, the two didn't cross paths again for almost a year. The next year's Royal Rumble, live from MSG, the two men who closed the Rumble last year, this year opened it up, and both men lasted a while but were eventually eliminated. But every time they got in the ring, it was magic, it was special. Whether it was 97 and 98 or 07 and 08, the fans needed a one on one match. Because now, both men were better performers than they were in the 90s. Both men were in different places in their lives and careers. Now both men were legends and icons. And it was time. After over 10 years since their last singles match, what better place? than Wrestlemania. The Undertaker had never lost at Wrestlemania. He was the phenom, the dead man. He was 16 and 0. But what about Shawn Michaels, the showstopper, the icon, the main event, Mr. Wrestlemania, the man who year after year put on a show at Wrestlemania that no one else could ever even dream of. He was truly Mr. Wrestlemania. It was the perfect dynamic, the man who never lost at Mania up against Mr. Wrestlemania. Shawn Michaels and Taker made it official on an episode of Raw in February of 2009, and what made the build so awesome was Shawn Michaels was the one playing mind games with the dead man. Taker would pull up to scare HBK, but Shawn was never shook. Shawn would sweet chin music Taker on the stage. Shawn would go to a graveyard and mock the dead man. Shawn even came out on SmackDown, The Undertaker show, dressed in all white with the hat and the coat that Taker would wear, but in white, the total opposite of the dead man. He had his own druids dressed in white, and he was just mocking The Undertaker. The Undertaker, though, he knew what was up and he came from under the ring to destroy Shawn Michaels but HBK escaped straight trolling the Undertaker on stage just dancing and having the time of his life. So at this point it was like was Shawn Michaels in the Undertaker's head? And on the last episode of Raw Before Mania, Shawn had a funeral in the ring for Taker's streak. This man had photos of him kicking the Undertaker's ass in 1997 in the ring enlarged and displayed. He had a casket. It was just straight disrespect. At this point I'm surprised Sean didn't drop a diss track. Just like 97, Sean always survived and he knew that, so he was never scared of The Undertaker. For once, Taker was the shook one. So then here we were, WrestleMania 25, Houston, Texas, 72,000 in attendance, Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker on the biggest stage of them all. Shawn Michaels came out wearing all white, the total opposite of The Undertaker. He came down from the sky as holy music played, white smoke filled the air, and as he touched the ground, the heartbreak kid made his entrance. Then it was time. 
The stadium turned dark and the dead men rose from the depths of hell. Two total opposites. They were face to face, one on one, Jim Ross on commentary, and ladies and gentlemen, we got the greatest WrestleMania match of all time. Shawn Michaels pulled out everything he could possibly think of to beat Taker. A minute into the match, this man was faking an injury, a callback to last year against Batista. It was clear that Shawn was going to do whatever it took. It was back and forth. They both did all their big moves, figure four leg locks, chops, and they were building it up. And the reversals were out of this world. Undertaker went for the choke slam, but Michaels in midair countered it with a cross face, which then turned into a side slam. And the whole time, the crowd was going nuts. Back and forth chance, we got the the iconic flying forearm and kip up. Michaels went up to the top rope. It was time for the flying elbow, but the Undertaker caught him with a choke slam. But Michaels countered that and went for the super kick. But Undertaker dropped to his back to avoid that. But nah, 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 nah. Michaels went for the figure four leg lock. But wait, Taker watches MMA, you know? So Hell's Gate out of nowhere. HBK was doing everything. He did baseball slides like he was prime Derek Jeter. He even went to the top rope. The Undertaker was outside, 72,000 on their feet. Shawn Michaels jumps, moonsaw as he soars through the air, but nope. Not today. But then it was Undertaker's turn to risk it all. The Undertaker was in the ring and this man was about to shoot his shot. He went from 0 to 100 real quick. Inside the ring, Sean is outside. He runs the rope. He soars in the air. But Michaels in some 1997 finesse pulls the cameraman in the way and bang. That's it. He's dead. He landed on his head. Good night. And at this moment, it was like, what the f is he okay? How is he going to continue? Is the streak gonna be over, Maggle? Insane. The Undertaker got clapped. Sean gets back in the ring. He's begging the ref, count it, count it. He doesn't care. He already faked an injury, so he doesn't care if it ends in a count out. A win is a win. And at this point, nobody knows, is the Undertaker okay? Can he continue? What's gonna happen? Is the match gonna change plans midway? Could the streak actually end with a count out? I mean, do they have a choice if the dead man is actually dead outside? So seven. Eight. Undertaker is trying to get into the ring like a drunk uncle at a party. Nine. And he somehow got in. And Shawn Michaels knew exactly what time it was. He goes for the sweet chin music, but nah, Undertaker catches him, but not a normal one. I swear to God, one of the most foul choke slams I have seen in my life. One, two, no. It was just iconic. Eventually, Sean got up and hit him with a super kick, but that wasn't enough either. Taker got the last ride, but that wasn't good enough either. Taker was on one. He went for a flying elbow. Sean moved out of the way, and they both slowly got up, and it was about to happen. Sean skins the cat in the corner. He thought he was safe, but Taker grabs him, flips him over, middle of the ring, tombstone, pile driver. The crowd is jumping. It's over. It's done. One two HBK became the fourth person ever to kick out of a tombstone after choke slams last rides he still kicked out And Taker at this point, many men wished death upon him, so he knew he had to go into demon mode. Taker pulls down the strap and he goes for the kill. Tombstone. But nah, a DDT out of nowhere. He goes for the second sweet chin music. He's tuning up the band. He hits it. One, two, no. Crazy. Just crazy. Something had to give. After 29 minutes of war, Shawn Michaels was once again going to risk it all. He's on the top rope, moonsault. He's soaring in the air, but at this very moment, you can see he fucked up. Taker catches him in midair in the moonsault, tombstone. One, two, three. 17 and 0. Oh. The greatest WrestleMania match of all time. The drama, the storytelling, the characters, the build up, the match itself, legendary. No one had ever pushed The Undertaker this far, but it wasn't 1997 anymore. Sean didn't survive this time, and the streak continued. You might one day not watch wrestling anymore, but you'll never forget this match. This is what wrestling is all about. Here are Vince McMahon's thoughts on this match. If you like someone or you have similar interests, it makes it an easier dance, so to speak. They did not like each other going into that, yet they put on an unbelievable performance. You had two individuals who wanted to have the best match ever. That was their goal, and they accomplished it. The best match ever, according to Vince McMahon. Shawn Michaels put on a performance of a lifetime. 
but he wasn't done yet. The rest of the year went by and it was December 2009. Everybody had moved on, Taker was the world champion, Shawn was in DX, both were far apart and were just living their lives until Shawn Michaels accepted the slammy for match of the year. He accepted it, but then he just snapped. I know I can beat you, Undertaker, and the madman did it. He challenged the Undertaker for a rematch at WrestleMania, but Taker didn't reply. Not until a month later where he simply said no. The heartbreak kid got curved. What a time to be alive. But HBK didn't go down without a fight. When you get curved on IG, what do you do? You just stalk her Twitter and DM her there, duh. Wait, what? Shawn Michaels declared that he was going to win the Royal Rumble so he could challenge The Undertaker who was a world heavyweight champion. HBK walked into the Rumble at number 18 and he put in work eliminating everyone in sight, even his tag team partner, Triple H. He made it all the way to the final four, but it wasn't meant to be. He got taken out by Batista and Shawn Shawn was tripping, he was begging the referees, please let me back in, let me back in. So he clapped the refs, sweet chin music on Charles Robinson, but he knew it was over. But desperate times call for desperate measures. So Elimination Chamber 2010, Taker is defending his title, he's down to the last man, he's about to end it, retain his title, and from under the chamber, HBK pops out, sweet chin music's Taker, allowing Jericho to win. This man wanted to fight The Undertaker at WrestleMania so bad, he let the guy who punched his wife two years ago beat Taker for the title. Look at HBK man, so inspirational. They come face to face on Raw and they made it official, but Taker said on one condition, if you lose, your career is over, and Sean accepted. WrestleMania 26, career versus streak, it doesn't get any bigger than that. 70,000 in attendance, live from Phoenix, Arizona, no crazy entrance for Sean this year, just business. Taker comes down from hell, face to face, Taker and Sean, it was time. And they did it again. With all the pressure of topping last year, all the pressure in the world, the main event, one of the most hyped matches of all time, they went out there and they dropped another classic. Taker even went for the dive that you know almost killed him last year, but Sean was too smart this year. This year, Sean brought his A game. There were no tricks, there was no fun in games, but once again, HBK didn't learn his lesson. He went for the moonsault to the outside, and what happens? Tombstone Pile Driver. But of course, it was not enough. Last ride, sweet chin music, and one of the wildest spots again was HBK. Him and his damn moonsault. After The Undertaker was placed on the announce table, this man went to the top rope and soared through the air and did a moonsault onto the announce table and one of the most beautiful moonsaults I've ever seen in my life. And at this point, it had been 20 minutes, it's like holy sh**. Is HBK gonna pull it off? He rolls him back into the ring and Sean goes for it again. He hits him with the sweet chin music. The crowd is going crazy after moonsaults, super kicks, tables breaking, surviving hell's gates, tombstones at last ride. This is it. One, two, not today. So what can HBK do now but go for another one? But this time, Undertaker sidestep, choke slam, and the Phenom was about to go to work. It was time for the tombstone. Middle of the ring, he hits it. One, two, no. Just like last year, Michaels kicked out. Taker at this point wasn't even shook. He knew what he had to do. Taker is going crazy, he's about to kill him, but he sees Sean just dead, crawling like a zombie in Black Ops 1. Taker stops his throat slash halfway and just yells at him, stay down. The Undertaker was showing mercy, stay down. Sean gets up and does a throat slash gesture and slaps The Undertaker. The Undertaker goes super sane mode, grabs him and hits him with the jumping tombstone. One, two. Three, the career is over. The crowd was in awe. After a 20 year plus career, it was the end. Shawn Michaels lost to the dead man and the streak lived. Back to back classics, two of the best ever in two of the best matches ever on the biggest stage. It was simply legendary. What started in the 90s all ended here. After everything they had been through, from classics in the 90s, the dislike they had for each other in the 90s, the politics, the drama, being apart for 9 years and Vince confirming that even in 09, they still didn't like each other. But here they were. After all of that, those two put on two legendary matches. And now there was nothing but respect for each other. 
Undertaker celebrated, he was 18-0, but all eyes were on HBK. The legendary career of the icon was over. Taker picked him up, shook his hand, and showed him respect. The same man who he said he wouldn't save if he was on fire, the same man who he was going to beat up at WrestleMania 14, but now they were standing in front of 70,000 fans showing respect to each other. Wrestling doesn't get better than this. HBK waved, walked away, and the career was over. Until the Saudi money came in and they did this, please God, just delete my memory of this. What a story and what a journey. Doesn't get better than this. This is why we love wrestling. So my question to you guys is simple. Which match is better, WrestleMania 25 or WrestleMania 26? Thank you guys for watching. It means the world to me. Like, comment, subscribe. More WrestleMania content coming soon. It means the world. We're almost at 100K. We're almost there. Let's go. Thank you guys for watching. See you guys later.